Professor Horror. Scary Stories. I had a paramedic supervisor back in the 90s who had 20 years in EMS and had a reputation for being a tough guy with a big heart. He told us a story that raised the hair on the back of my neck one day that I will never forget. In 1981, he was an EMT for a volunteer fire department in a New Hampshire farming community. In this town lived an elderly brother and sister along with an elderly cousin on a sprawling farm. They were very well liked by the townsfolk and they would offer a plot of their farmland to anyone for the asking with one simple rule. No matter what they grew, they had to donate one third of their yield to area food banks. This was just one of the reasons they were so beloved. As they got older, Mary, the sister, became frail with osteoporosis and was admitted to a nursing home. John, her brother, was left to look after the farm. One day, the cousin who lived nearby was unable to reach John by phone and became concerned. He went to the farm and entered the farmhouse. He discovered John in an upstairs bedroom, unconscious, suffering from a stroke. He immediately called 911. Word of trouble at the farm spread quickly, and soon the siren was blaring, notifying volunteers in the town. The town's police and BLS ambulance raced to the farm. An ambulance from an adjoining community was also dispatched. My boss was one of the EMTs responding and was familiar with this family. When he arrived, he said he walked into the house and was told to hurry, as CPR was underway. As he entered the front hall on his left was a sitting room, and in the room he noticed an elderly woman sitting in a rocking chair, smiling back at him. He thought how happy and peaceful she looked, and was a bit odd given what was going on. He then recognized her. It was Mary. They get John to an ambulance and transported him to the hospital, where he was pronounced on arrival. As my boss was filing out his report at the nurse's station, he made a comment to one of the staff of how sad that it was that Mary was well enough to go home and then have John die like that. The staff member gave him a strange look and asked what he was talking about. My boss said how great Mary looked at the house. He was then informed that Mary passed away the day before at a nursing home and could not have possibly been at the farm. Thinking he mistook someone else for Mary, he asked around about who the female was at the house. There were no females during the call. All the responders were male. He then described what she was wearing, including an oversized set of pearls and a pink flowered dress to the staff. The dress was Mary's favorite. He had no doubt that the pleasant elderly woman who gave him a warm smile was indeed Mary. Two days later, my boss and his then-girlfriend decided to attend the wake for John and Mary, double wake and funeral, as Mary was the girlfriend's grade school teacher. As my boss walked into the funeral home, he gazed over the coffin holding Mary and nearly fainted, for there was Mary wearing her favorite pink flower dress and the oversized pearl necklace, exactly as she wore two days earlier at the farm. Story 2 we responded to an apartment building where the caretaker had called us. His initial report was that he went to check on the suit because water had been reported flooding into the hallway. He informed us that there was a deceased lady in the tub. He said he saw her and immediately backed out without touching anything. We entered the suit. It was filled with steam. The humidity has started peeling the paint off the walls and sheets. There was also the smell of cooked meat. Upon entering the bathroom, we found the supposed deceased seated in the tub with all the hot water running. From the looks of it, she had been there for a while. The skin on her body all the way from toes to sternum had started separating, much like the paint on the walls. It was bubbled and coming up in sheets. I checked for vitals while someone turned off the water and the others went to get a bag and radio for a can. When the body is badly decomposed, we put them in a sheet metal box. I almost shit my pants when I found signs of life. The lady had a pulse. She wasn't really responsive, but she was breathing shallow, had a heartbeat, and was looking at us. We had to get her out. We radioed for EMS and informed them that we had a live patient with at least 80% burns. They were a few minutes out, so we started to get the patient ready for transport. I don't remember what we were doing when we noticed the water draining from the tub, but what we saw was her torso essentially degloving itself as the water receded. We immediately plugged the bathtub and continued working on her. When EMS arrived, we had to transfer her to the stretcher. That's where things got ugly. We planned to gently lift her out of the tub and place her on the stretcher. However, as soon as we touched her, her skin was coming off in sheets. I remember saying, sorry ma'am, but we have to do this. As I picked up my section and came away with almost all of the skin I contacted stuck to my arms. That was the only time she made a sound. She probably couldn't feel it due to the nerve damage, 
but I'm pretty sure she knew she had lost almost all of her skin from the chest down. The water was still extremely hot, so we were also getting burned while doing this. We managed to get her onto a stretcher and the EMS took her away. When the bathtub was drained, there was a sheet of skin stuck to the bottom. We had to scrape it off and bag it. I still can't eat certain chicken dishes because of this. We figured she was in the tub and the water got cool, so she turned it on with her toe. She must have had a stroke and could not turn it off again. Being in an apartment, it had pretty much unlimited hot water, so that poor lady sat there for approximately three days cooking. She did not survive. We don't get a lot of follow-up calls, but I heard she passed away. Between a stroke and severe burns, it wasn't likely that she'd make it, but we treated every patient like they had a chance. The human body is weird and wonderful thing. Sometimes people do make it through some pretty terrible things. Story 3 my jurisdiction has a lot of illegal substances of all kinds, but speed and smack are the most prevalent. Unfortunately, a lot of teen pregnancy as well. Combine those two and you get inexperienced, abusive mothers who make mistakes. It was a rainy Thursday evening and we got a call for a car wreck with entrapment. We got on the scene and fire and police are frantically searching the area. I send my partner over to check on the patients and start the assessment. No sooner than I point and I see what the issue is. The mother hadn't properly secured her child. Due to the rain, I assume, and going way, way too fast, she wrecked. The child went through the windshield. He was decapitated due to the force of the hitting glass. His bloody body was mangled in the dash, and his head nowhere to be found. The mother did not know this and was freaking out. Officers were distracting her and trying to get her help while we searched for the child's head. I ended up finding it quite bruised and disfigured. I wrapped it in a towel to hide it from prying eyes. The firemen got into the car to secure the body. That was the toughest and most messed up thing I've done. Having to tell and show a mother messed up out of her mind that her kid was killed like that was also the second time I've held a decapitated head in my hands. 